No one told us. I was in uh, Greece on vacation, I remember. Just like, all of a sudden, started receiving texts like, Yo, you're on South Park. What up? I'm like, huh? No. So no. I, no one told you guys? No one well, was Our manager, yeah. Derek, he said, he said they're, they're thinking about using you guys. There's a couple other bands in the mix. Oh, yeah, they had right. a bunch of bands they said, were thinking of. And he yeah. said, you'll know when it airs. <laughs> Whenever I need music gear, I always go to Sweetwater.com. If it's mics, headphones, or studio and recording gear, Sweetwater has you covered. Next time you need any music gear, support the podcast by using the link in the description and comment section below. Are you guys aware of the impact that that Dying Fetus has made on on the entire metal genre? Like, so we, especially a tour like this is perfect. You have like multi generational bands. You have bands like Sangusugabak. You know, they're a younger band that's obviously influenced by you know you guys, and you have a band like us, kind of like mid tier age, I guess you could say. I think <laughs> yeah. we, right? we notice it more when there's a lot of bands playing like that, like Chaos and Carnage. Are we on yeah. right now or no? Yeah. Oh, we are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we are. We are. We are flying. Okay. Are, what's, are, what's up, internet? <laughs> we are flying before you're flying later. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I yeah, was that's just making noticed. sure. <laughs> when there's a lot of bands and you see, you know, you're talking to everybody backstage. Yeah. yeah. That's when you notice it more. I think. Yeah. Do you? I mean, are you aware of like the impact at all? No. Uh, you know, I try to stay a little distant from that. I don't want to know all this stuff. I don't want to be conceited. I don't want anything to... Sure. I want to still think that, you know, we have a ways to go. I never want to think that we've reached, you know, any point, you know, of like, uh, we made it or something, or sure. we're doing well. I'm, I'm superstitious about that. Like, it's always... I just rather be oblivious to a lot of that and just, just think we still have... Just worry about our own self and what we're doing. The next album, for example, and that mm -hmm. kind of thing and that's great if we are making an impact and contributing to the scene and everything so it's just awesome but i don't like consume my thoughts personally with the, with that kind of thing like yeah man fucking we're really doing it and we it's it's awesome you know but that's just kind of like my philosophy just yeah you know and just be humble all the time yeah you know that's that's i don't know so me to me you go you, you take like you know being humble you have your your own road Right, and that's pretty much it. Because there's always somebody that's better. I mean, I feel like I'm boarded, or like there's bands that are a little more technical. There's always somebody better than you, so you should never really be too high on your horse, or you know, that's. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man, we're just happy to be involved with the scene and everything, and mm -hmm. yeah, man. I guess I made it from like a self-reflective type of, uh, you know, like like you're still humble, you're still, you're still on your own road, but like kind of do like a self reflect every once in a while. I'll, I'll do that every once in a while. You're like, right. Whoa, what the hell? You know, yeah. I mean, I was just in someone's basement in the garage, you know, trying to play drums. Right. Uh, on 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 a shitty demo. Did you play drums on that first demo? I did. I did. It's it's not terrible. It's not edited. You know, like <laughs> ever. <laughs> If it was like now and I did them, it'd be, they'd be perfect drums, right? We'd right. quantize the kicks and, and all. Not to say the drummers can't do that stuff now, but yeah, it's very raw. It's just like at that stage, it was just trying to get on the map, you know, get a band together. You know, Sean was in a band at that time. And basically back in Maryland, there were no good drummers back in the early 90s. No one could really play consistent double bass or, you know, this and that. It was just tough. So... And we're kind of in, in the country, of course, before the internet. So it was just kind of like, all right, let me try this. I kind of sucked. You know, some people like it for some reason, you know. I mean, it's a good demo all around, you know. It has some of our songs that, you know, like Grotesque and Pamela. It's one of our most successful songs that people still, to this still? day, that's one of the first songs still? I ever wrote for Dying Fetus was Grotesque and Pamela. So there's really? Some, there's some kind of energy with that song, you know, like that new... I don't know when you're first. Okay, uh, you're man. excited and yeah. and, and um, I don't know, but but nonetheless, man, it was a good demo and um, you know, got us on our way. You know, to you know, it, it served its purpose. You know, but it's not the best. <laughs> but you know, I'm kind of embarrassed about those drums, to be honest. You know, <laughs> it's so crazy. I mean, how long were you even playing drums at that at that point before you even? Only a year that? or two. I was, I was a, a guitarist. I wasn't even a, a drummer. It was just like I bought a pad set. 
had a D4 brain and had acoustic cymbals and just tried to make it happen. I just kind of built my own little fucking little stupid cage, like a um, little like pad set and and that was it, you know. And just to get it out of, just get it going. Yeah, just to get know? it going, man. You know, because I knew like, you know, if you. You know, the uh, sampled sounds like for the D4 would sound better than a fucking mic'd up. Because I had some industrial friends that had, you know, pad sets. And I was like, well, this sounds way better than a fucking acoustic set, you know. And you can just plug it in and it sounds pretty good. And mm -hmm. so that was the, you know, my way of thinking with that. Just, you know. <laughs> Just start. Just start. Make it happen. You know. Yeah, I was like, who who's playing drums on this? And then I did a little bit more research. And I was like, oh, what the fuck? Well, John's I, playing? I sucked. I <laughs> sucked. We got Trey now, so we're all good. You know, Trey's, Trey's incredible. Trey's too far behind. Hey, hey, hey John, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll give you credit, dude. Actually, I, it wasn't that bad. What you did. Thank oh, you. Oh damn, you, you got you got thank you, you got the nod. Thank no, you. No, dude, man. it wasn't that bad. I was dude. trying, but whatever. What what do you think about about that Trey? Is you really think it's not it's not that bad? No, not at all, dude. I was. I remember listening to that and just being like, okay, it's electronic drums, but they were on time. So yeah. that was fine with me. I was like, okay, cool. Especially when it came out, mm -hmm. you know, a oh, yeah. long time ago. Like 92, 93, yeah, yeah. something like yeah. that. And People just started using, like, triggers back then. Right. You know? Oh, yeah. Well, I, remember, everyone was still on acoustic bass drums, and they just started using triggers yes. around that time. Yeah, so people started using triggers around 93? Is that, like, a good... About, right? About, Early 90s? I, I mean... I remember seeing Deicide Live. Morbid and Angel. Doing Morbid Angel. Yeah, yeah. yeah I guess so. It was but not the early bands. 90s. The D4, I guess, was the brain at that yeah. time, right? Yeah. So that it wasn't a... You know, when it was sampled, it sounded, you know, just like everyone else started doing at the same time. You know, it seemed like. Yeah. yeah. So what? So would the would, would the first drum sample be considered like like the D four that was highly used? I think so. Yeah. Hey, Jake, can, you, the first can you type in uh, D four C C when that thing came out? Just curious. I really I never thought was, about that. Yeah. Late eighties, I believe. Late. But I, I, but you know, Alesis, Yeah. Everyone yeah. wasn't using it yet at that time. I yeah. remember that. You know, a lot of people were trying to tune their bass drums together. Is that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The the D four. There you go. Well, if you don't if you don't know, Hot for Teacher is has sampled drums. I mean, yeah. electronic drums from Van right, Halen. Right, right. That's that a big done, band. I though. think that was done with like the yeah. Lin that's, Tech, uh, that's a Lin good, Drum, Lin Drum. I Lin just drum. mean like metal and yeah, our style good and point. thrash yeah. to death metal. You know, good point. Yeah, yeah. Who fifty one fifty was all was all uh, Van Halen fifty one fifty was all electronic, wasn't it? Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I remember that was like one of the first bands doing it, you know. Which I didn't like the Van Halen sound. I was like, man, you know, it sounded kind of yeah. weird to me. But yeah. your memory, Sean. Your memory was good. Ninety two. Ninety two. Wow. Oh well. D four. I thought it came out earlier than that. Wow. Oh shit. Who? So okay. So you have Morbid Angel and D side, and obviously you guys were kind of dabbing with that. Who? Who was? Who was like? Was there like a first? Band that you that you heard? Oh wait, wait like what? What is that kick sound? Yeah, industrial um, shit stuff. Basically, for me. injustice in for all. You know, like oh, right, to right. me it was the, even though it wasn't death metal, but that was yeah. like the first clicky. And he's and also it's kind of funny, but Striper to hell with the devil actually had a really clicky <laughs> uh, <laughs> kick drum sound. You know, but um, then I yeah, that was it for me. Injustice for all. I was like, what the fuck? Okay, that's well, he's fast. That's great. Yeah, like, right. That if, if you see that cover, you know they're fucking sick. People make fun of Striper, but they're Trace pretty badass, right you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. What is that cover? Oh my God. Hey man, are, are those angels like but, wait, her, Hercules angels? They made themselves. That angels. dude has good guitar tone. Michael Sweet. I got the Michael Sweet pedal, by the way, with those little uh, pedal boards. It's, it's not bad, man. I've always liked their guitar tone, but yeah. You know, hey. Honest, I never heard. I never really gave Striper a. You know, a Chris, well, Christian Christian me, Christian metal band. There you go. No. Yeah. yeah. Look, oh, Isaiah. Yeah. Isaiah oh, yeah, that's Greece. why they're that, all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's why they are all. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they made themselves buff. That's fine. <laughs> no, they're man of war, hey, but no. Christian. That should be our our next promo. Like, you know what? <laughs> I can't get a six pack. I'm just gonna sell my husband drawing on me. You know, say it counts, right? Gosh. <laughs> is that? Oh, is that? Is that them? 
Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's them, man. For those of you listening, I can't even describe what this. A lot of hairspray in that is, picture. Is, is, we got the <laughs> two brothers: Michael Sweet, Robert Sweet, Oz Fox, and the other bass player. I don't know, but wow. <laughs> okay, but I used to listen to. I, you know, what can I say, man? But so, but I like everything. I like a lot of different shit. You know, not just death metal. So yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, what, like, what were you listening to when you were a kid? Ah, uh, you know, like fucking. Radio rock, um, Striper. Yeah, well, yeah, of course, some of that. I'm old Ted Nugent, fucking, you know, fucking ACDC, man. That was like my jam, you know. Fucking most people loved it, you know. Back in Black and Highway to Hell, all that kind of stuff, mm. you know. And you know, whatever was on the radio, Rush and Zeppelin and all that kind of normal stuff back in you know the day, you know. Nothing too outrageous. You know. Did that? Did that maybe kind of was that? I mean, like like a precursor to you actually involve more go go towards more like like the heavy groove or groove yeah yeah dominant and like uh, the yeah. definitely like, yeah it wasn't it was done. just all about the power chord like Boston they started doing power chords you know Boston? once once yeah you know once you okay. learn the power chord from a rock band then you just apply it into something heavy or a different context or whatever but you know even own uh, uh yes. Uh, owner of a lonely heart. Dun, 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 Those are good bass bands. Oh, dun, dun, that's a heavy dun, riff. Dun, dun, dun. That was one of the first. Sean's up right now. That's yeah. If you think <laughs> about it, it's a heavy ass riff. So I don't know. You you put distortion on that. It's good to be a heavy you, riff. You tune that down to B flat or whatever people do. <laughs> true, 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 true. It would be brutal, right? <laughs> oh, especially now people are doing the. Uh, have you heard of the uh, double tunings? No. I just found out about this uh, last month. It's like let's say like uh, you know, you guys are what in D? We're doing Sta- C, C sharp C standard. Sharp. Okay, standard, right? But yeah, let's say uh, to do it, bands will do it lo- are doing it lower, like the whole octave lower, and then and, and, That's, they, yeah. and they call that double, double okay. D, double C. Yeah, you're just taking it down an octave and more A. I heard people are doing which, double A. Yeah, the, it's insane. Mm. It's insane. Then you don't really necessarily necessarily need Sean's the bass right now. guitar. <laughs> <laughs> like, He's getting into his territory. That's what. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. That's, that's what we all. We don't need a bass player. You, yeah, you start, <laughs> yeah, right. getting, you start no getting into the bass frequencies when you start getting so low. Mm-hmm. You know, to play the bass at that, you know, that tuning or whatever, the strings flapping all around. Like I don't yeah. know. I don't, I don't know how you're supposed to get it to sound good. You know, when it's, like it's a, that totally low, I mean... Oversaturation of low-end frequency just becomes yeah. a rumble without, True. like, uh, someone to bring the ass, like, a bass, you know? Yeah. If it's all guitars, like, the, just like the tour we just did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With only four bass players and eight bands. I know? know there's only four bass players. Right, right. You know, how does that make, how does that make you feel? I'm just curious. Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As it should. And you have a very, uh, as, as we, as uh, us in, in, in the Sui camp has explained, uh, you have a very manly bass tone. Nice. It's manly. It's sick, dude. It, 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 fits, it fits the sound perfectly. Yeah. You know? You need it for one guitar, you know? Like, And Sean's using this different effect right now, which kind of makes it a little more dirty, and it blends in with the guitar really well live. And, it does. And it just gives it more girth and fullness and all this and, mm-hmm. and he changes his strings every day and all this like some bassists never change their strings and yep. it's kind of like get a poof kind of tone but this is a bright kind of it's very it's very present nice. very manly yeah. tone i like that description <laughs> <laughs> yeah. jang there you go the jang jangtastic yeah and with you, the high end as well yeah and sean you you obviously practice yeah yeah right there. <laughs> you know, you, I mean, it's like are you. I, I love when when I can see and hear like the time and, and the hours. You know, you guys, you, you guys have it. It's crazy. You know, what what, what were you listening to as as a kid? Because I mean, it, it's, you're kind of in, in a different category when you're like when you're talking like death metal bass players, real bass players. I mean, when I was a kid, yeah. like uh, you know, Michael Jackson or <laughs> Michael Jackson, you know, Dire Straits, <laughs> something like that. When I was young, you know. So were you uh, were you playing like along to these? No, I didn't even songs? start playing yet until I was like 14, 15 years old. Okay. So I started late, you know, compared to most people that are in bands, you know. Okay. So so so, so what like just like you know what made you like okay I'm I'm playing death metal bass. I mean, this back then it. it'd be Metallica probably and all that, Cliff Burton, you know, seeing stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Cliff Burton, yeah, he, dude, yeah. he he's a ripper, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, he was one of the, you know, 
after that and then hearing <coughs> something like Injustice for All where the bass is non-existent, you know, it's kind of sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? Like, damn. Yeah. Yeah, but well, well, they, they had that, that remix, right? I mean... <laughs> so, <laughs> wait, so, I mean, I've heard people online like add bass to the song you know, or the right. album or whatever. Sure, but I, I didn't know they remixed it. I didn't. I mean, I, yeah, I remember I, seeing I mean, a tab book where it. you see all these notes. Like none of these notes exist on this album. Like it might, oh. but I don't hear it. Shit, dude. <laughs> you know, and you, I mean, you could just hear like the mix fighting, turning turn guitars up. Two yeah. thumbs up. Right, right. Oh, wait, what's but bass? This, but that's what gave that kick drum such a prominent, you know, uh, yeah. you know, just kick in the ass. It was, yeah, no bass guitar to interfere with that kick drum, so it just really pounded out, you know? <laughs> <laughs> was that, uh, is that, is that a sample kick? You guys, you that's, guys, you guys just got me thinking earlier. No, I don't think it is. It's not. Because it's got, because it's got that. There's so, every, so like, you, you know. can kind of hear this, like, skip yeah. in it, where, like, when he's doing the skank beats, like, there's this one hit that's a little harder than little the others. Harder. So, I I mean, there's probably just, like, anything, some studio yeah. magic going on with compressors, but sure. it, I don't think it, no, I don't think it was sampled. I question but if he it did it be. on Dyer's Eve, though. I don't, I don't know. That, yeah. I always kind of wondered, did he play it? Because, I don't know. Yeah, I wasn't there fast. to witness it, but... Yeah. <laughs> During uh, hey John, re- re- real quick, during when you're doing like the first record in '96, like there uh-huh. is there is obviously like I mean it's a you know it's a big jump from those demos, right? Yeah, Correct. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you want you had like a like a you really like redefine the sound. Like, did you, it, was it like a conscious move? Like, okay, like you know this is what we want to do. We're gonna combine death metal riffing mm-hmm. and heavy slam. Was that like a conscious like this is what like I want to do? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I started picking up on bands. I started realizing the slower stuff kind of had more impact, you know. And um, mm. yeah, I'm trying to think of exactly where it, you know. It, I want to say maybe Sepultura, man. Like you know, some of that on a rise. And um, I was a heavy fan of them, you know. So you know, they started kind of doing that stuff. Really, if you think about it, a rise and and especially they had did it. Da, 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 da. You know, just a couple yeah. parts where just everything stopped, the guitar started doing its thing, and then the kick drum started, you know, building and this and that. And so I guess it was kind of them, man. You know, like, of course, I'm mm. trying to think of hardcore, like when I started listening to that and when, you know, some of that 90s hardcore kind of um, inspired me. And, and, the, and the death metal bands that played in, in uh, New York, like Internal Bleeding and fucking. Pyrexia, mm. and if you think about uh, SOD, they were they were a big influence. I always forget to mention them. SOD had a large impact on me. Mar- you know that SOD? Just, just just that yeah, Japan fucking March of SOD and Jan 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 Jan. They oh they shit. were doing mosh rhythm. That was back in eighty five. So you had that you know, and I was like, whoa, I loved SOD. You know, and some. It was them, right? You we know, you that. got it. <laughs> you got to give it to those guys. You know, they really. I think we both play that in sound. Paved the way, so yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah. March oh, of SOD. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, we both do it in sound. Yeah. So it's kind of that, and then you know, seeing stuff like Ingve Malmsteen and, and all this. Oh, people like Shred. So let's take that groove and that Shred and kind of combine it. And there were bands like say Corner. They're kind of doing this and um. You know, all kinds of thrash bands um, that would have kind of like a breakdown, like this band called Death Row from from Germany. This song called Scattered by the Wind had a, you know, or even like, you know, Megadeth. Um, I love that riff. Whatever song that is, is that Wake Up Dead? Wake Up Dead. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so, you know, just like, oh, that works. These slower kind of riffs and crunch kind of style and then put it in a death metal and that's just kind of how it came to be, I guess, you know? So you really combine different elements of like yeah. heavy. Not, 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 right. You're not going, this is death metal, this is it. It's like, right. okay, I'll take, you know, S.O.D., Megadeth, yeah. S- Serpatoro, Groove. Even King Diamond Invade. on, I think it's Sleepless Nights. Dun, 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 on conspiracy album, he actually has some breakdown parts in there. I, I, I kind of, 
yeah, if you listen to Sleepless Nights, you know, and he, he breaks it down. Um, there's a couple of those songs. And so I think, you know, I think maybe even some of the death metal bands got inspired from that, you know, so. But yeah. Well, what were like some early 90s, uh, late 80s hardcore? Because it really sounds like. Yeah, I liked Agnostic Front. Of course, that mm. was like the first band from hardcore. And then like Mad Ball and. 25 to life i have to say they had some of the best riffs you know back really? then yeah you know and um who else fucking i don't know yeah but that whole uh new york hardcore scene was, was kind of doing that groove thing as well you know mm -hmm. there was a band called next step up there from baltimore doing it just kind of crunch riffs and you know so just picked up you know i was always watching going seeing bands and yeah, it's like that works. You see the crowd moving. That's what it was. You know, you see, mm. oh, they're they're going slow, and that's when the crowd would start really punishing each other. And that's yeah. Like, oh, Eureka! There it is. That's what you do. That's you know. <laughs> so, so so you'll drive. Slow you know, it down. Slow make it down. heavy. You know. Wow. So so you'll like drive for forty nine minutes an hour up to Baltimore, see some you know local hardcore bands. Maybe yeah, and see like, oh yeah. wait, people are moving towards this kind of yeah, group, you know yeah yeah, it's sick. So that was just it, you know. When bands were doing it, like I said, internal bleeding. You know, I, I can't say we invented anything. We just kind of emulated things and mm -hmm. did it our own way. That's that's all, sick. you know. And so. then then you guys uh, covered this uh, Napalm Death song, which aren't they? Uh, the song called Scum. Aren't they credited? I mean, Trey, you, you probably you probably won't know this. Are they? As the first blast beat, am I speaking? Repulsion. Uh, Probably the band Repulsion, right? Oh, That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were yeah. known to be one of the first blasting or bands. Nuclear Repulsion. Assault, I guess. Or yeah, Repulsion. Hang the Pope. Yes, but I would say Hang the Pope. Pope. What a yeah. band! Yeah, right. <laughs> Hang the Pope by well, that that's Holy Nuclear moly. Assault had that song. Hang the Pope. Hang the Pope. Hang the Pope. Yeah, yeah. It's I real think, fast. And I, I want to say. I say that's blasting. And right. then also S O D again. Milk. Yeah, yeah. Milk. Yeah. Really? Yeah, but um, so, Napalm, I think, had more you know, notoriety, I guess, than any of those other bands. I, I guess. see. They had the most attention, I guess. Yeah. So, re re Repulsion is obviously midnight, uh, mid uh, 80s. If, if you're well, late, right? Yeah, I they, think late. I'm not sure. <laughs> late 80s? Yeah. They were one of the first. They were yeah. on Relapse, right? I think. Some well, point. they are now. Oh, they know. are now, right, right. right. So, th so there's not like like a set, you know. This is like kind of like the first band to do like a blast beat. No, is it kind of like oh, maybe it's kind of maybe this band, maybe that song. Is it is it kind of like yeah. that? I yeah. think so. But most people say Napalm Scum, right? Yeah, yeah. Because they have like that that notoriety, right? Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. And, interesting. You know what I didn't know about your uh, Dying Fetus, your band, until literally like I did like research. I thought you're you're always a, a three piece. No, <laughs> I, I didn't know. I, I didn't know there was like a four piece, and because well, because I mean, because I mean, I mean, Sean, you've been in in the band for twenty two years since two thousand one. I mean, Trey, you're you're going on sixteen years, so it's it's kind of like just oh, you know, I mean, you kind of think about that, like sixteen years, like wow. you're, uh, it's, it seems I like know. you yeah. you were like a solid, <laughs> like you like built like this image and sound of like this fucking powerhouse of like a trifecta, you know, metal band. So kind of always, oh, like Dying Fetus, I mean, maybe it might be my, my age as well, but in being kind of ignorant, I was like, yo, oh, they're always been three-piece. And I did a reason, oh, shit, there was like another guitar player, but like, and it kind of seems like you guys kind of found the three-piece on accident. More or yeah, less, basically. Yeah, yeah, we went through a lot of different um, lineups, I guess you'd say, and people. And it was just tough, you know, like when you're in the... Beginning stages, there's not a lot of money involved. There's, you know, the touring, you know, you're in a band and just like living yeah. in a van and all this and the, have that commitment, lifelong commitment to this. It's it's tough for some people to have that, you know, they're going to do it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Be like, ah, I want to go get a real job or right. whatever. Or they yeah. get a girlfriend or, you know, there's always something, you know. It's hard to find a band, everyone on the same page, like-minded, all working towards the same goal. It's kind of hard to do that. So, mm -hmm. a lot of, I mean, some bands look out and find that in the beginning, but sometimes it takes a while it does. To, 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 you know, get it, get that. But, um, yeah, you know, basically we had 
this lineup, and we had Mike Kimball on guitar, we mm -hmm. were a four piece when Trey joined, and I was like, everything's solid, you know. You know, Mike was a great guitarist and this and that, but he kind of decided to go his own way. Just wasn't feeling it anymore. Wanted to get his had a IT job. job. He had a yeah, yeah had a career, job. and mm -hmm. so he just left. And we were going to like replace him with someone, and we I think we tried out a few guys, and it just didn't quite work out. And then we had gigs. We had like, all right, we had to go to play some gigs, and we did it as a three piece, and and it I don't know. We were like fucking a couple other people. We're like, yo, you should stick with this. This gives you an identity, you know, something different, you know, it's kind of in a way a bit more impressive with less guys, you know, mm -hmm. right now I'm six guys up there fucking, you know, <laughs> you know, just like, you know, it's like, whoa, all this noise is coming out of three people. And so yeah. it's, it's kind of given us a bit of an identity, the, the rush of death metal, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, yeah, man. So, but yeah, we've been, you know, for me, it's cool to have, a solid lineup for so many years because that, that was a bummer, you know, constantly doing interviews or whatever. Like, oh, what? what, what? It made me look, look like a big asshole, you know. Mm -hmm. you know. And there was rumors that I stole money, which I never did from the band and this and that and all this. But it was, it was a few bumps in the road and hurdles, but now, you know, everything's smooth. You know, we're loving life, you know, doing yeah. tours with you guys and everything's going well. So, you know... You just have to stick through things sometimes, you know, persevere, and, and um, usually things will, good things will come, you know. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you guys have, like, uh, like multiple uh, stages in your career. Because, I mean, yeah, you're, so, th I mean, the first the first record with, with you, Trey, is Descend, correct? Yes. Okay, was that, like, uh, yeah, it's kind of like a big, like, move, where it's like, okay, now, okay, we're a four-piece, now we're going to get, like, now we have, like, the new drummer. And we're gonna be three piece. Was there was there was there like like a writing pressure there? I mean, how how was that new like dynamic with, with with you guys? I mean, I think it was pretty easy because we were already playing live as three, and oh yeah yeah, it's not as many solos as certain bands, so it wasn't you know it wasn't the same right. thing as like someone that has a million solos in every song. So mm. and a lot of the technical stuff we were doing together, and then when he does a solo. I just try to fill the space with like chords or something. And live, it's obvious there's not another guitarist and there's no tracks playing live. But then right. that was the only talk I think was talking about how much should we add another guitar in recordings that you wouldn't hear live. Oh, you know what I mean? That's a that, that's a serious yeah. yeah. That's like the biggest talks like we had about being a three piece. You know that type of stuff. Like, you know, are people going to hear this other guitar and they're not going to like it live because it's not there? Or then what mm. parts does he choose to play type of thing? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like some, there's like a melody part over top of something else. Yeah. And I think it's we've done that less and less, I think, as time gone has gone by. Now yeah. it's more you hear bass and the guitar, you know, compared to like, that was just a thing at first because, you know, like we felt like we were limiting ourselves if not, if he couldn't have a second guitar track, like in a recording. Yeah. So that was like the biggest thing you know to become in three i think yeah yeah was there was there like a like a like a back and forth of like maybe like some creative like tension because that's because it's kind of like like a big like like discussion hey should you be guitar or no this is my bass chord part you fuck <laughs> <laughs> you know i don't recall anything. it just put more no, pressure uh, on me i felt like for me it just was like, oh fuck now i don't have another guitar so every you just sticking out like you do a solo there's nothing no one to really hide behind, you know, so that kind right. of made me improve. It's like sink or swim, you know, it's like, you know, it kind of helped me become a better player, just having more focus, you know, on myself or whatever. And, but, um, so, so, so were you, so you were, you were focusing more, so you had to, you had to practice more. Okay. I don't have someone else. Kind to of, and, yeah. You know, cause I have, cause I yeah. have Mark, so I could be like, I'm, I'm a little sloppy. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so you know you, what I mean? So you, you, you can't really do that. Cause like Mike Kimmel was a pretty good guitarist as well. So, you know, mm -hmm. he, he would do some of the leads and I could lay back sometimes and just chill and do the rhythm or whatever. But when you're, yeah, one guitarist is just more attention on you. If you flub up, you know, it's more noticeable and, it kind yeah, of but. really like honed in on like, like the dying feet of sound 
where it's like, a, I mean, you're already doing like, you know, obviously sweeps and solos and like, so, you know, some like, you know, SOD, you yeah. know, slams, yeah. but like it yeah. really kind of, you really expanded that like dynamic work. I mean, this is like a fucking, you know, Sean's doing like, like, the, like the chord trays blasting and then like you're doing like this crazy solo and then you yeah. go, I don't know where like, like this fucking right. old school hardcore slam. It really kind of maybe forced you to do that if I, 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 might, mm -hmm. I might be wrong, but it kind of like really honed in on your sound, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, and also like Trey's kick drums. He, he's you know has a lot of kicks, and that's it's, it's a lot of kicks. It fill, you know, it, it fills the low end, the ass up. You know, it's, he's you all, keep he's, he's always. Ass. I know, right? Got to kind of build that booty. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I just remember like uh, it was booty. the Descend album was the first with Trey, mm -hmm. and it was uh, Steve Wright who we recorded with. Well, yeah. always giving me the speech about here's the bass drum, and you have to be in a different slot. So you're audible. Oh. If you're in the same slot, you're just fighting each other and it becomes a little rumble, a saturation where pe people's ear don't know what they're hearing, really. It's just a rumble because we're fighting over the same little slot type of thing. So that's like I'm in a separate slot, you know. But yeah, then if you're fighting for the slot, how do you do that with like... Well, it's, I'm in a different slot. Well, it's EQ, yeah. you know, EQ. Yeah. But then also, with, with the, depending on the BPM of the kick drum, that can actually change the pitch of the kick drum too. True. Because the faster you go, the, the, it, it kind of pitches up. Yeah. If you if you take a deep listen on some bands that have like really rapid changes or like well they'll be right here to here, yeah. you'll kind of slightly hear this weird little pitch change in the mm. low end because you just have a, a sample rate that's just going so much faster, and uh, hmm. yeah, that that can happen too. You know, and, and then you're invading another frequency right, right. where bass yeah. can be really filling in the bottom end and you gotta you know hopefully you have an engineer that knows where to place those kick drums and knows where to place the bass on the eq yeah they, they, they really gotta know what like what what, like what they're doing right mm -hmm. yeah yeah how, um, trey how did you end up joining like like the band uh just uh just was just a dude in the local baltimore scene i was actually about to hang it up uh really mm -hmm. i i was I had a good career working in av install and i gave it one last shot uh, got with some friends um, in a band called Covenants, which had an extra member of Dying Fetus in it. And my, my friend Eric Little got me involved in that. And I opened for Fetus across Canada. And at the end of that tour, they asked me to come and um, come and try out. And 16-something years later, here we are. Right. You know? How and do you go from wanting to hang it up to, like, now you're full-time and, like, you have a career in, in death metal? <laughs> that's crazy that's dude. same for me yeah that is nuts you get it you I get was, a chance yeah, you out. take you take you take the step out you leave the people behind that are holding you back sorry i'm not not dissing yeah. on my friends back I home it, but I get, like, it, I get it but you got to surround yourself with people that want to go over there and these guys and the people that in covenants wanted to go over there whatever wherever over there is right we want to go from point a to point b together mm -hmm. and we're not fighting you know it's like and you're leaving you make sacrifices you make sacrifices. That's what you do. Yeah. And was that was that similar for for you, Sean? I needed, you know, for me, I had money problems and I had to start working a lot more, you know, over time. I got two jobs for a while there and, you know, I had to work and, you know, make some money, basically. And then I was kind of out of it for a year, probably. And I just practicing way more than I ever did, probably, when I was out of it, you know. Whoa. Yeah, just because I knew I wanted it back in, but, you know, I had to deal with money and and I, and I did that, so then I went back to it. You know, it was a local band before I, you know, jumped in the fetus. You know, before John called me to the band Garden Shadows for a couple months before uh, before joining Fetus. You know, that's wild. Yeah, before before you got the phone call. Yeah. It was always why why is this asshole John Gallagher calling me? Oh no, he's, he wants me. He wants me to join the band. God. Well, I, re I remember. I mean, like my old band, Tortured. Like way back in the day, we would play at Phantasmagoria all the time. I remember we would like we were looking for bass players too. We'd see Sean play with Garden of Shadows. We're like, dude, this dude's head banging like hard. Yeah, like, dude, like, it'd be cool if we could get. But we we, right. were, we were younger and we just we I mean, we weren't gonna approach him, man. He was of course I, you know, right. <laughs> He's 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 too he's too timid. He's too he's too, he's yeah. too tall. Yeah, I'm talking that guy. You know, yeah. it's crazy. It's John. It's, it's really hard, man. Like uh, it takes years sometimes. You're right. Like to find committed. That's what, uh, yeah. Lifers, people that lifers, like, truly right. love it. That you know have the sound of 
this band and like you know their like, like their bones you know it's like it's like a, it's a part it's like a part of you guys it, it, it is it, it is you guys it's, it takes years to find you know those like relationships yeah you know yeah man it, it's it's luck it's a bit of luck too man. Luck. you know a lot of luck my, a lot yeah, of luck. my goodness <laughs> it's a lot of yeah, luck yeah. how how we still alive fucking playing blast beats and slams yeah it's crazy yeah man happy to be here you know just happy it all worked <laughs> out you know i'm mean, just cause this you know i wanted to stay out of the real world and the real job you know yeah of course there's benefits <laughs> of having a real job but i don't know man this 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 road is just more interesting because i was in the government too and kind of had to make a decision should i go this way or just stay in the government you know how i have my retirement you know blah 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 wow but i was like nah <laughs> like, yeah. man, but that's like right. now because basically i'll just be sleeping half the time you know in some room waiting for something to do literally you know back then you know and it was just so boring i was getting fat and fucking you know point. i don't know it's like <laughs> sometimes the easy road in life is not the best way you know like you know, you gotta like take chances and stuff. I feel like you know. Mm -hmm. So, after doing this for like, like for so long, and you talk about you know persevering, like you find like you know you finally find like a, like the fucking found found foundation. You know, like, yeah. did you ever like before? I mean, maybe even before Sean joined, but definitely before Trey. Like, did you ever like? Hey, this is this is too much. I gotta like step or step back or, or step out. I'm just, oh, just the band. Yeah. Or not really. I mean, no. Nah. I mean, I did take what was it after, after War of Attrition, or something. We did take like a bit of a hiatus or it was something. Way before it. We was that, is that what it was? For a drummer. Oh, it was mm, okay. Yeah. That I, so yeah. We, again, the drummer situation. <clears throat> we wrote the whole album on my computer. That's right. We were sitting around <laughs> and we had man yeah, a real yeah. primitive um, software yeah. drum prop uh, program. PC drummer, I think it was called. But anyway, so yeah, we were writing stuff, you know, and I was like, man, the same old song and dance. We can't find a drummer, blah blah. And at that point, and and I was being real with myself, like Necrophagus was on fire, mm. the Faceless were on fire, like all these like tech bands, tech death metal was more popular, and I was like, man, I mean, I don't know, I can't play as well as these guys. I don't think that there's even a chance. So I. Yeah, I think for a minute there, I was thinking, ah, eh, may have to put it aside and get a regular job. That was about two thousand five or Six, something. Yeah, Six, yeah, right before the album came out. Yeah, yeah. And actually, got to give credit to this dude, Bruce Gregg. He's no longer with us, but he rest in peace. He um, kind of like brought Dwayne on board. I, you know, he was like, "Yo, man, fucking." He kind of like pushed me. You know, I was like, "No, nah, man, this guy's good. He wants to do it." Blah blah, and. Then, Came up from Texas, Dwayne Timlin, who helped us out, did mm -hmm. War of Attrition, and um, got the the ball rolling again. And right. um, and then I was like, all right, let's just kind of carry from there. But there was a time where I was like, eh, I don't know, man, maybe I'm not going to be able to be a lifer in this. You know, just I thought all the technical bands were were going to take over. Whoa. And 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 now I feel like now it's back to the old school. You know, got these younger um retro bands you know kind of doing the the incantation thing or whatever you want to say yeah. the the early 90s death metal vibe or the, whatever the thrash and, revival thrash revival yeah. and and all this so now for us uh, we blend in better you know we're, yeah we have a few tech parts but i feel like we're more of a groove band more of a slam band and technical you know so i think we fit in in today's metal you know genre or whatever a little bit better now you know so yeah you, you never ever sh straight away from like the sound to like you never follow trends ever not really you know? not not really no no just and and a lot of it you know i got to give credit to cannibal corpse you know like like you know just follow their philosophy keep kind of doing the same thing you know like or the same style don't don't mm -hmm. change it you know because as a musician, you always think, I mean, I gotta do something better. I gotta broaden the horizons. Maybe I'll bring in keyboards. Maybe do some sure. other, do something else. You know, because you want to kind of grow as a musician. But of course. I don't think that works in death metal. You know, it's been proven not to. You know, you stick with the, you know, your formula. You know, and and, and just try to make it better. And just try to make yeah. it better. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. 
Don't and, alienate uh, the fan base. Right. right. No. Don't don't bring no. in keyboards. Some bands have tried. You know, we know the bands that have tried. And you got to <laughs> give them respect for trying, you know. Sure. I admire that, you know. But. It's risky. It's risky. <laughs> yeah. At the, at the end of the day, people want that, you know, what they grew up with, what they expect from you. They don't want some oddball shit. So. Yeah. So. It's like, should Trey do a blast beat while playing keyboard? I mean, we, we did on I mean, <laughs> next record, you know. Right. Yeah, yeah, right? I mean, how to grow an extra limb. That's, too. that's what side projects are for, you know, right? Yeah, that's yeah. when you do something else that, you know, just to have some, some fun or, you know, whatever. Yeah, it just keeps your fucking found, foundation, you know? Yeah. I just follow what Cannibal do, I, you know? <laughs> It's Honestly, sick. <laughs> it's, it's, it's sick. I mean, it's sick. It's crazy. I mean, to, to think about like I mean, you have like this. Uh, I mean, at this point, I mean, I, w- I want to talk about your record, uh, Rain Supreme. And that's like the, that's your seventh record, second with Trey. Um, I mean, Sean, you've been in a band for for like a minute. There was like, was there like a discussion? Because it's, it really s- felt sounded like you guys flip the switch and really okay this is dying fetus like was there like a like like a talk about it or he's naturally all right let's just get in the room and start jamming well that was kind of an interesting part of my life and i i had gotten not proud to say it but i got a dui i started fucking up too hard on mm. drinking and other things and i got caught you know so i had you know had i Went sober for like a year, and that's when that album was written. And I was so hyper focused on that record. It was like, because you know, I wanted to drink, I wanted to fuck up, I wanted to do things, but I really channeled everything into that album and really was focused on it, man. I was just, yeah. So, yeah, that, that was, that's why it's, it's a little bit better than some of the other ones, you know, just like really put a lot of time and and thought into it and just i was facing my demons you know with with all that you know and um music was my outlet so so the album came out really well i think because of that you know wow so i was stone sober you know right now i was drinking a lot of the monster stuff i remember that that's what happens when you get get, you know you know what all of a sudder like i got monster and coffee now yeah 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 i was so (laughs) wired and this dude I was doing pre-pro with Darren Morris, you know, he, we would just like constantly just be at it. I would stay, spend a night at his house, you know, be jamming on shit, then wake up the next day and fucking back at it and just, he helped a lot with, with me with a lot of his ideas as well. But yeah, that was like a, you know, now I'm back to smoking weed again and things like that, but drink a little bit, but I'm not out of hand. It, no, it was, you're not. I had to. Put myself in check. Out of hand. I'll be honest. I was doing a little <laughs> bit of the fucking pills and all that stupid shit, man. Because it was that easy. Happens. I was doing Xanax on the road. Oh no! Down, you know, I had downtime and you know started falling into that trap a little bit, and then I got busted, and it was kind of good. I got busted because it could have saved my life. You know, who knows? You know, but uh, that, and in a weird way, that that record kind of did save, like, save your life. You know. It did, man. That's yeah. yeah. So that, that 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 record came out in 2012. So what year did you get sober? Well, yeah, around that time. It was so it was about 2010, 2011, you know, something like that. Yep. You know, so yeah. What up? Uh, what changed it? Did you guys see? Oh, wait, wait, I mean, shit. He got. I mean, John has got a DUI. Like we, like, he's now he's sober, and we're writing, <laughs> we're, we're, we're writing sick tunes now. You know, did, did like did like did, did like the songs feel like oh this is little, this is a little bit different? I don't know. I kind of felt like a continuation, but a more focused continuation of Descend. Yeah, really? that's me too. To me, like yeah. like huh. Descend was a a bit of a change in the sound. A little bit. Mm-hmm. There were elements that were were not present in previous albums. I think it was the um, studio also and studio stuff, but um, yeah, you know, at yeah. least from me and Sean's perspective, like I considered it more and john laid it out you know he was definitely more focused he was he was sequestered with darren constantly yeah. and like they were just churning out demo i think the it was steve wright studio we went to it was descend was the first album with him oh and then rain is the second album with him Interesting. and it got a lot better he knew exactly what we wanted now he knew the yeah. three of us our personalities what 
you know, how to push each one of us. And, mm. you know, we like something totally different. It's pretty funny. You know, yeah. He calls me names. Of course. <laughs> it pisses me off. It right. makes you piss. You're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That helps me for some reason. Yeah. Right, right. It's just funny where... And then the set, everything got better as far as, like, tones for everything all the way across the board, I think, with him. Because he knew what we wanted, and it got better, I think. So that's the main thing I always notice, you know, from that one album to the next. That wow. was with him. Yeah. So they wait. I mean, hey, let's just, let's just see what happens when, when we do this again, you know? Right. Yeah. It, it's crazy with a, with a different mindset. You could do the same thing and have a totally different outcome just by a switch or doing something, like, slightly different. And he, he was not a death metal guy either. You know, it's not like he had really a bunch of death metal bands recording with him. No, it was what like, a, uh, what's he like? Gospel rock does everything. everything. Does, does everything, right? Everything. Yeah, yeah. It makes a lot of sense. A lot of bands don't do that. Like you know, you track track your record with someone that doesn't necessarily do metal all the time. Yeah. And that's how you kind of get like that unexplainable something that's like different that will like set like, set your record apart. You know? Yeah. It's crazy. I didn't know it was, it was the same guy. Yeah, and then uh. You know, Steve, it got right? better and better. So, like the last album we just did, the newest one that's not out yet, he, mm. he we, we recorded it with him, but uh, we had Mark Lewis was mixing it or whatever. So, mm. and we we added something different yeah. on the newest album. But the three before were all with uh, Steve at his studio. Sick. Yeah. Well, three and a half. We did a we did the EP. There. Oh yeah, yeah, the EP yeah, also. Yeah. Right, right. Wait, who who mixed Rain? Steve Wright. Steve yes. Wright. So yeah, uh, yeah. produce mix. Okay, sick. Yeah. It's, it's it's pretty special when they they kind of do all of it and it's kind of still have that like the, the fresh year. It's hard it's, it's hard to hit. Yeah, you know it's ha- yeah. I still have a fresh year out there. You know, hanging out with Dying Feet for fucking yeah. two months, being, being <laughs> right. pissed off. Right, you yeah. know, it's crazy. It's, it's special, man. Yeah, and, and what and what a crazy time in your uh, in your career because I mean that that shit comes out. I mean, what was it like re- like like received well like right 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 out of the gates. Yeah, those two, those two albums were the first times we like got the, what the Heat Seekers yeah, yeah. on like started tracking on at least I don't know I mean you guys tell me yeah, but, I mean, like we started tracking on Billboard but I also think that had to do a lot with the way the industry had changed at the time mm. you know the internet was a little bit more downloading was a little <laughs> bit more popular yeah you know so you're you know you can sell fewer CDs and track on track you know damn that's fucking sick and that that's we got to talk about it. How did you guys get on South Park? <laughs> what the? That is yeah. so fucking sick. They, they, no, we just, yeah, they, they did it all on their own. Nobody, no one told us. I was on in uh, Greece on vacation. I remember just like, and all of a sudden started receiving texts like, "Yo, you're on South Park." What? I'm like, "Huh?" No. So yeah. I, we, no one told you guys. No one. Well, well Derek, I mean, I Derek did. Derek say, told us. Our oh, manager, yeah. Derek, he said he said they're they're thinking about using you guys. There's a couple other bands in the mix. Oh, yeah, they had a bunch of bands they said, were thinking of. And he yeah. said you'll know when it airs, <laughs> <laughs> whether they picked us or not. Right. Yeah. You know. Okay. So it was, was kind of like okay, we don't you don't know, but you, like you'll know when it's fucking out in the world. Slightly discounted it because like yeah, right, that's not gonna happen. You know. Did, did you, I mean it, it, you can't imagine like oh wait, it's, it's not it's not that's not not gonna play. But it. that's not right. us yeah. there. That's us okay. there. That's us there on that one when they're practicing in the yeah there you go <laughs> practicing in the shed, <laughs> and that's second skin. I hate this farm. <laughs> So, so fucking yeah. sick, dude. That is. So you, uh, so you found out with the whole world. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That is fucking crazy. That, yeah, that was. That's like our highlight of our career so far, I guess. That's. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. Wow. Crimson and Dawn. Truly an honor. <laughs> truly an honor to be part oh, yeah. of South Park. I would yeah. say, you know, from one tray to another. Thanks, Trey. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Trey shout Parker. Out. Yeah. Trey Parker. Shout out, man. So you guys, so, so you just, so it was a rumor. Didn't think of ending of it, and then you get the park, get the phone calls and texts saying, yeah. "Hey, uh, you're on South Park." Yeah. This is crazy. <laughs> this is freaking yeah. nuts. Yeah. And also, uh, sh- shout out to also. Uh, Death Decline, they were the uh, first band too. They got they got on there. Mm-hmm. Oh Pretty yeah, sick. Yeah, I, I never heard of them until until that either. Yeah, and same. They they sounded yeah. cool. Yeah, I was yeah. like, oh shit, that's fucking sick. Did they up? Uh, if, if you're curious, uh, it's on the uh, the abandoned China episode. Mm-hmm. Pretty sick. Have you have any of you watched like, like that that whole EP or no? 
Was that episode? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I was watching. I was yeah, watching yeah, it the right. day it came out. Right. I was, yeah, I was like, yeah. oh, is it gonna happen? Oh really? <laughs> yeah, I love South like Park the, anyway. And it's the first yeah. thirty seconds of the episode. I'm like, is it? Yeah, that's oh. the opening of the episode. Is us playing basically? What did you think, dude? I was so freaking stoked. <laughs> I was so stoked. That is, I can't imagine like the feeling of that. Like, they're they're playing my band, De- a Depeno band on yeah. uh, national television. Wow. <laughs> yeah. We made it, man. We made it. Yeah. It is pretty no. funny to actually hear people say that though. You know, nowadays, like a couple kids would come up, I heard, saw you heard you on South Park. Really? Wow. Really? Wow. It's helped. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that a lot, you know. It's yeah. more recently, you know. Yeah, I mean the kind of, it's South Park, it's what I mean, it's a massive I yeah, mean, yeah. show and then that's gonna like live on forever. So they're gonna keep on yeah, <laughs> keep right. out, you know. Keep finding out about you guys. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Know? And what a random song to pick. Yeah, yeah. It's not, yeah, it's not like it's not like a single or anything. It's like you know, nah, just you know, set second skin. All right, put that on. Yeah, it's funny how it's they so, just. I wonder. Yeah, but it's a video they, song. It's a video song. It's yeah. a video is it? Song. Oh, it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. What what a trip, dude. Crimson Dawn, shout out, dude. You guys, you guys, you guys should do a collab with them. You have like a <laughs> right, <laughs> fucking sick, dude. <laughs> right. Then we just put us like in the background of that. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be badass. That'd be neat. I mean, isn't it like a crazy road that you know, uh, John? You playing? I'm not trying to be an asshole, but you playing shitty drums at one point, right? And then <laughs> to to uh, right. to uh, on South Park. What I mean, what a journey. Ooh, that, yeah, I know, that man. Is. I'm blessed, man. My grandfather always said, "You have a horseshoe." up your ass you know or something he used to say that as a kid always seemed to have pretty good luck so you know i don't know man it's been a nice ride man it's been a lot of fun man you know so it's yeah we're just ready for the next thing you know whatever it is you know (laughs) there's there's always like a next thing yeah yeah And uh, and that and that also reminds me so you guys put out two singles uh, the past few months, is there? Yes. Is this, I mean, is, are are, they, are these separate or are these going going to be a part of a a record? Yeah, part of the new record. Okay, sick. Yeah, which is uh, going to be called "Make Them Beg for Death." That's the title of the new record. We haven't released that yet, so here we are. Yeah, two more coming. Sick. Two more singles. Yeah. Okay, cool. It's. Yeah. Yeah, that, we love that title. I think it's a brutal. Make them beg for death. That's that's just a pretty. What was it one in July and one in August? Right, the next. Yeah, two. we got a couple okay. more coming yeah. up before the release, which is going to be the fall. We're going to have a the album fall. release, and was it July? Is it the uh, the announcement? The next single. Yeah, yeah in July. Mm-hmm. It's the announcement so and the single come out. Yeah, announcement yeah. in July. So yeah, we took some of the footage from the last uh, couple nights ago. LA or whatever some of that footage is going in the video oh great like, with some a lot of brutal kind of like um, violent kind of um, you know acting or whatever so it's, it's it's pretty it's gonna be a sick video man for sure and the song really happy happy with I mean the whole album I'm happy with I'm, you know it's gonna be a good one you know one of our best I mean for sure it sounds really really full and thick and, and everything so we spent a lot of time with it, and you know now we've just been sitting on it for a while because this vinyl thing, right? Isn't the, the vinyl it's production is kind of holding us up, setting it's, us back? It's and, but yeah, it's eventually going to come out. So it, you know, <laughs> we're just excited for that. And um, yeah, man. I think I mean, these, these past few songs have been sick. Thank you, you know, man. They're, we've fuck, been, they're fucking. We've been playing it live. They seem to be going over pretty well. The dive bomb part and the all dive this, bomb you know, riff is and, sick, and dude. At first, I thought maybe it was a little cheesy, but it's no. it's been very effective. It's been you know people they like it, so you know we're happy with that. Of course, you know fucking unbridled fury and compulsion for cruelty. Yeah, yeah. So no, oh, it's a dive piece is very effective. So yeah, yeah you guys are very, trying, it's a man. very effective it's, band. We're trying, you know, man. You know, you guys, you guys, not trying, you guys, you guys trying are trying. Trying fetus. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> trying fetus. <laughs> trying fetus. That is what's up, dude. You know, I had a, I, this, uh, sometimes you get, like, reminded of what, of what you're doing. And I, uh, just like an old, like, sometimes you, there's this fans you kind of talk to. 
I mean, like on like a like a personal basis, either on on Instagram or some. So I'm talking to like a friend, and uh, he massive Sui fan, obviously. That's why he's over talking. But he showed up to the Vegas show wearing like a, like a Diane Peters shirt, and, and you know he had he hasn't seen you. He was like, man, like Diane Peters is why I even know your band. Oh, and it's, it's just crazy. Like it's just like no matter like your band is always like introducing. Okay. Someone else's band to like to the them, you know, it's crazy, and it, it, that you guys are still doing that. So you're st- like you're still, you, you guys had your own sound and just created this whole other genre of, of music, and then for bands like us, you know, we you know we we reap the, like the benefits of that. You know, like you have, if there's no Dying Fetus, there's no us, there's no other Deathcore, and like you know, and they're like hey, they they hear Dying Fetus and then they they find us. It's it's still happening. It's crazy, man. Or vice versa. I'm about to say, yeah. Vice, vice versa mm-hmm. also. Right, that's right. Weird. Especially, you know, younger people. That's why right. we've been yeah. doing, you know. <laughs> right. We've been doing a lot of crossover yeah. tours. I feel the same way. It's weird. I feel the same way. Right, right. Like going yeah. with kind of what you're saying. That's why we've been, we've been playing with other bands that are not just strictly brutal death metal or whatever. We've been doing Chelsea Grin. We're doing, mm-hmm. you know, sort of metalcore bands because, you know, to bring the, you know, all the the uh, crowds together, man. Just yeah. to just you know, and to increase our fan base to get out in front of different people. A lot of our you know brutal fans or old school fans, whatever you want to say, they don't really like that. Sometimes, like, why the fuck are you going out with knock loose? Sure. And it's like, well, you know, you kind of have to. You kind of have to go out with other bands, you know, to, to gain exposure and, and stuff. Like, if we were to sustain a career, you can't just always you know stay with the same pocket of of bands you know you gotta get out there but mm-hmm. yeah and then people you know works man they hear hear that, that's a crazy line i'm not glued dying fetus terror yeah, there you go there wow. you know but people How, are like why the fuck you touring with them well you know some good shows you should have seen them <laughs> I mean, many, yeah. you should have seen how many people are in those rooms right, right. exactly of course not, they're not all gonna like you but a certain percentage will or they're gonna check you out and like you said and you know, and carry Especially on with it. Terror was playing before us, so yeah. that's huge, right? Right, that was hardcore you know, yeah. mixed. And we've toured with them before too. Yeah, yeah, we love those guys, and yeah, man, it just you know, it's good to cross over, you know. Yeah, so. what uh, what what is it? Uh, I'm, I'll, I'll 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 end it soon here, but uh, what 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 is it about Dying Fetus that really this kind of has that like I guess you'd say crossover appeal to it you could kind of play with like a hardcore band you could play with that one band you could play with you know maybe because we don't have any gimmicks or anything we're just like a bare bones kind of thing just doing what we do and just kind of works with other bands you know like sure you know maybe that's part of it i don't know but the hardcore diy ethic yeah the old remnants of that we're not wearing costumes we're not trying to be pretty boys we're just doing what we do you know it Mm-hmm. Uh, there's some kind of integrity with that. I think people realize that, you know, like they're not relying on, they're just putting their music forward. No props. And letting that, and, yeah, no <laughs> yeah. props, no. No no bass tracks. No backing yeah, tracks. Yeah, no backing <laughs> tracks. And no offense to anyone that does that. That's cool. Right, right. But, you know, <laughs> you know, we want to keep it pure, simple, unadulterated. And, um, yeah. So. I find that uh, integrity and being authentic does have these, this uh, crossover. It's weird. Yeah. I, I, try, I try not to get spiritual when I talk about kind of stuff, but like there's this this some conscious thing where if, if you're true if you're true yourself and your music has that integrity, that deep rooted integrity in your fucking bones, and all yeah. all, 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 all you guys love it, it kind of has that. You can kind of play whatever show you want. Yeah. It's weird. It, yeah. It's yeah. crazy. It's a, there's an honesty there or something. You know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Hard to describe. It's kind of spiritual, you know. Like some of these things are just hard to pinpoint, you know, why it happens or what, why it works this way, you know. And totally. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So. Well, um, I know you guys got to get to the airport. Uh, you're probably gonna not like me when you guys leave because you're going into rush hour traffic. And yeah. why the fuck did we yes. do this? <laughs> nah, this day is, off. That is killer, ma'am. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, yeah, you know, we yeah. need to be out here more doing this kind of stuff you know and i think this is the first podcast we've done yeah. together as yeah. a band 
Yeah. Well, the is. Adult Swim thing, right? Yeah, that. <laughs> and I, I did yeah, a podcast yeah. up in Baltimore, but like yeah. as a band, this is the first. You, you, you yeah. got the first one. Wow. Yeah. You, you, Garza, appreciate that. You got the first one. There you thank go. you for having us. No, yeah. I mean, I appreciate it. And I just want to, I want to personally thank you. I mean, for everything that uh, you guys, Diane Fias, have done for, for heavy music and, and continue to uh, do so. You know, there's, I mean, there's so many bands that have been inspired by, by you guys and it's still it's still continues so so thank so thank you guys for for being here and uh where can people find you on the just, internet yeah just more or less that <laughs> tweetybird.com yeah man like Tweety i don't have, <laughs> i don't have a personal account man or anything but yeah it's the bands facebook and, and what have you instagram and all that twitter you know, and sick all right, well, Diane Fetus, appreciate it. Love you guys, and th thank you for a, a great month of my life. Yeah, thanks for having me. Great thanks time. For, thanks Hell for being yeah, cool, dude. Oh, yeah, it was, it was, it was cool, awesome man. to get to meet and understand your guys, man. It was thank super you. cool. Likewise, yeah. man. Thank you. All right, guys. Later. Everyone, later. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Yeah.